Hey, this is Presh Tollwalker. Here are two fun logic puzzles from Puzzling Stack Exchange. Problem one. Alice, Bob, and Charlie are one of each type. A truth teller that always tells the truth, a liar that always lies, and a spy can lie or tell the truth. Alice says she is not a truth teller Bob says he is not a spy, and Charlie says he is not a liar. What type is Charlie? A. Truth teller. B. Liar. C. Spy. D. There is not enough information. Problem 2. Here is a delightful puzzle. Charlie has $1,000. He can buy his favorite chocolate bar for $1. And there is a promotion. For every four chocolate wrappers submitted, the store will give one chocolate bar. What is the maximum number of chocolate bars Charlie can get? Pause the video if you'd like to give these problems a try. And when you're ready, keep watching to learn how to solve these problems. Let's solve problem one. Here's one way to visualize a solution. Let's make a three by three grid where the rows are Alice, Bob, and Charlie, and the columns are truth teller, liar, and spy. Alice, Bob, and Charlie are one of each type. So suppose that Alice is a truth teller, then Alice cannot be any of the other types, and no one else can be a truth teller. So we can eliminate the row and column. So Bob could be a liar, and that would eliminate the rest of the row and the rest of the column. That means Charlie has to be the spy. So we see that the possibilities are determined once we figured out what two people are. Now, if instead Bob was a spy, then Charlie would have to be a liar. So if Alice is a truth teller, there are only two possibilities to consider. Now, suppose instead that Alice was a liar, then we would need either Bob to be a spy and Charlie to be a truth teller or vice versa. Finally, if Alice were a spy, then there are only two possibilities to consider. Bob could be a truth teller and Charlie could be a liar or vice versa. So in total, there are six possibilities to consider. So let's figure this out. So from the given information, let's imagine what if Alice were a truth teller? In that case, she cannot say she is not a truth teller. That would be a contradiction. So it's not possible for Alice to be a truth teller. If instead Alice were a liar, then she would always lie. But saying she's not a truth teller would then be a true statement. So that means Alice has to be a spy. So we figured out that this has to be Alice a spy. So we can eliminate the row and the column. So Bob and Charlie only have two possibilities. So let's narrow it down. If Bob were a liar, then he would always lie. But saying he is not a spy would then be a true statement. But we know that Bob cannot be a spy that's already taken, so it must be that Bob is a truth teller. So we can then eliminate the row and the column, and that means Charlie has to be a liar. So we figured it out by process of elimination. The correct answer is B, Charlie is a liar. Now let's solve problem two. So the first way is the long way. We'll consider the step, the number of bars that Charlie could get, and the number of wrappers divided by four. So in the very first step, Charlie can take the $1,000 and get 1,000 chocolate bars. Then we could take that to be 1,000 wrappers divided by four, which gives 250 additional chocolate bars. So in step two, Charlie can get 250 chocolate bars. We then take those 250 wrappers and divide it by four, and we get 62.5. So we want to be careful about accounting here. So Charlie can use 248 of those, which is an evenly divisible by four number. He'll be left with two of the wrappers. So in the next step, we take 248 divided by four, 
and we get 62 more chocolate bars. Then Charlie can take those 62 wrappers with the two wrappers that are left over, making for a total of 64 wrappers. So this will be 64 divided by four, which is 16 more chocolate bars that Charlie could get. So then in the next step, we have 16 more bars. 16 is divisible by four. That gives four more for the next step. So then we have four more bars. Four divided by four is one. So in the final step, he gets one more bar and that's it. He can't get any more. So the total number of chocolate bars is the sum of numbers in this column. And this works out to be 1,333 chocolate bars. And that is the answer. Now this is the long way to solve the problem. Here's a clever trick. Imagine Charlie buys one chocolate bar per day. So on the very first day or day zero, he buys one chocolate and has $999 left. Now think about buying one chocolate bar on the next three days. So he'll get three chocolates and you'll have three fewer dollars. So that'll be $996 left. Now at this point, we can add up that there are four chocolate wrappers. So on day four, he can use those four wrappers to get one free chocolate bar. Then we just repeat this. On days five through seven, he buys three more chocolates and has $993 left. On day eight, he can use the wrappers from day four, which was the free bar, plus the three he bought to get one free chocolate bar. And this pattern will continue. The next three days, he'll buy three more chocolates, subtracting three more dollars, then use the four wrappers to get one free chocolate. So we can summarize the pattern. After he buys one chocolate on day zero, for every $3 spent, Charlie can get four chocolate bars. So how many chocolate bars can he get additionally? This will be 999 divided by three, multiplied by four, which equals 1,332 more chocolate bars. So in total, this will be one plus 1,332, which equals 1,333 chocolate bars. And that's the answer. Thanks for making us one of the best communities on YouTube. See you next episode of Mind Your Decisions, where we solve the world's problems, one video at a time.